Hi, I'm Stephanie Laska. I lost 140 pounds and created Dirty Lazy Keto. Thanks for joining me here on the YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe and enjoy the show. Excellent. Well, we're going to talk today about why, why is losing weight on keto so hard for me? Why is losing weight on keto so hard for me? Has that ever crossed your mind? Thumbs up if it has, because it has for me. You know, why, do you think that ever? Do you ever go, well, you know, Stephanie lost 140 pounds. It must have been super easy for her at every second. No, no, that was not the case. There were moments where I thought to myself, oh, why is losing weight on keto so hard for me? I definitely struggled with that at times. I had my ups and downs, but I was able to overcome them. And there were times where I lost faith, but I still overcame them. And then there were times where I got frustrated or mad, but I still overcame it. So I want to tell you how I did that, what tricks worked for me. I want you to walk away today from our short video today with the solution. I want you to have a solution to that feeling. If it creeps up on you, even if it just happens once, I want you to be armed and ready to go. That way, if you start thinking, you know, why is losing weight on keto so hard for me? You'll have an answer. You'll have six strategies, in fact, okay? Six. Okay? Because I want you to learn. Oh, no. Oh, no. Here she comes with the props. <laughs> I want you to fake it till you make it. I, I know. But a Dutch. You know what? I know I'm goofy, but I'm trying to make a little bit of happiness and joy with this because losing weight doesn't have to be so scary and depressing and sad. We are together on this. You're not alone. You and your feelings about, you know, feeling frustrated, you're not alone. Everybody feels the same way as you. So by bringing this topic out in the open, I hope to, you know, have a little fun, but also some seriousness and give you some practical ideas because sometimes you do have to fake it till you make it. You don't wake up one day with your face on. I don't look like this when I wake up. No, ma'am. Takes a lot of makeup and curling irons and whatnot. You know, we've got to put our face on and sometimes we have to fake it till we make it. Sometimes we don't just wake up all excited about trying to eat healthy. No, no, we don't. So these are the steps and I'm going to teach you. So I'm putting my mask away. I know that's frightening. He doesn't have his makeup on. But isn't that cute? I love the masks. He hangs out in my tiki hut in my backyard. He gives me a lot of joy. So step, uh, we've got six steps, okay? And you can follow these in any order. These are just the things that really helped me to overcome those negative thoughts when they would creep in. The first step that worked for me is, I know you'll be shocked by this one, but I learned every time anything positive happened in my life with my weight loss, oh, here she comes with the lights and the sound makers. Here it is. I'm putting my crown on. But I learned that every time anything went well, even a teeny tiny thing, I would start to celebrate. I would go on social. I'd tell anybody who would listen. I'd write it in my journal. I'd pat myself on the back. I'd blow a horn. Whatever I had to do to try to get myself positive and excited and to get that momentum going. Because let's face it, you know, most of us don't like make one home cooked meal. You know, we don't put on our dirty, lazy keto apron. Some of you have this, don't you? Who has one? Raise your hand. <laughs> but some of you, you know, you make one home cooked meal a week or maybe two. And then no one's really that appreciative, right? Is your family like celebrating and like, oh, mom, dad, oh, oh. is everybody like <laughs> excited and clapping and praising you for doing a low carb, healthy meal at home? No. Family, they're just like, who cares? Yeah, whatever, I don't like this, or where's the potatoes, or wham, 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 I want steak, I want chicken, right? Family is difficult. So you have to be the one that celebrates yourself. So whether that is something really small, like, hey, you know what? This week I packed a lunch, at least maybe one time, maybe two, maybe three. But even the very minimum, if you're used to going out to lunch every day, celebrate that one time that you packed yourself lunch. And did you notice I have Dirty Lazy Keto lunch pails? Oh. Maybe you'll win one by participating in the comments. Super cute, right? But seriously, you have to celebrate every little thing that you do. You cannot wait for somebody else to do it for you. And ah, whatever you do, don't wait. Don't be like, oh, you know, five pounds is no big deal. You know, I can't make a big deal out of that. I can't be putting on a giant sash and being like, Oh, I'm fabulous. 
I lost five pounds, you know? And meanwhile, you're worried because you have like maybe a hundred to go or 150 to go. I mean, I lost 140 pounds. So I get the fact that if you lost five, you may not feel like it's worthy of celebration, but it really is. That's the key to overcoming those kind of negative thoughts where you think, oh, the keto diet's so hard for me. This is how you overcome it. Anyway, this is a step that works for me. So whether that means you are just, you know, shopping one time for some healthy low-carb vegetables, you're packing your lunch, you're making a meal, don't be afraid to give yourself these kind of participation awards, right? <laughs> Isn't that how they do it in public school now? They're like, good job, you're in eighth place and you showed up. I love it. Some of these are really funny. They're like, you came to the thing, you get an award. That's okay. Do the same thing as what our public schools are doing to our kids because it reinforces positive behavior. So if you celebrate and you, you know, cheer yourself on and you put on these little little, you know, song and dances for yourself in an appropriate spot, obviously. Not everyone's going to care, but I care. Then you will try to motivate and cheer yourself onto success. Okay? You don't have to be embarrassed. I will be here to cheer you on. In fact, um, just a quick story on this note. When I was running uh, the Modesto Marathon, it was my very first marathon, and I was so scared. And I thought, oh, my God, I'm going to die. I'm gonna, I can't do this. 26.2 miles. And at the very last minute, I made myself this little sticker, and I pinned it to my back. And it said, I lost 140 pounds. Like, go running. And I stuck this on my back. And I forgot about it. But people behind me didn't. People would come up behind me, and they'd slap me on the back and say, good job. Oh, my gosh. You're doing great. You lost 140 pounds, and you're running. Oh, my gosh. And when I was suffering and dying and really low and low in spirits, every time I heard that, it would cheer me on. It would make my whole attitude turn around, and it made me feel really positive and excited. And it didn't matter how slow I was, you know, hearing that positivity and the, that encouragement, it made a big difference for me. I know I'm kind of embarrassed talking about it, <laughs> but it worked. I don't really care what other people think. I needed to get to that finish line, and I was willing to pull out all the stops. So tell me what is a small action right now. Today, I'm going to ask you to put you on the spot. What's something right this very second that you feel proud of? What is it? Did you go grocery shopping? Did you pack a lunch? Did you drink some water today? Write in the comments. Write this second. Yes, you. <laughs> because I'm going to pick a winner from the comments section for a prize. And it could be one of those lunch pails, or it could be something else I'm going to spin while everyone's typing, because I'm going to pick someone at random for the prize. I love prizes. I used to be a teacher. Can you tell? It's fun to have prizes. I like rewards. Oh, okay. So the prize today is the Dirty Lazy Keto Get Started Losing Weight book. This is the first book I recommend that you read in the whole series. If you are going to choose a book, this is the one to start with. It explains the whole DLK program, why you should do it. It'll motivate you, inspire you, and answer every single question you've ever had about losing weight. I know, that's a lot to put on one book, but it really is true. It's a USA Today bestseller. It's available around the world. It's available in Russia, as a matter of fact. It's available um, in every country. So get your copy today, and I'll pick a person from the winner, um, from the comments, to win a prize. <gasps> I know, maybe it's you. All you have to do is share something you're proud of, and you're entering to win. So that was uh, number one. That was all tip number one. Did you get my excitement and enthusiasm? If you're feeling it, if you're feeling the love, make sure you're thumbs upping the video, because then that helps it stay afloat. Otherwise, it dies a sad and lonely death. Um, so number two, um, as you're reprogramming your thoughts and your actions start to change, I just want to prepare you. Okay, I'm going to prepare you that as you're kind of transforming yourself and you're getting all cheerful and full of energy, I'm going to prepare you that as you're reprogramming your thoughts and your actions start to change, oh, something could happen. Something could happen. And it has to do with ruffling feathers. Okay, yes, I went there. It's going to ruffle some feathers. The world around you is kind of like a cocoon. And at this very second, your world is reinforcing your current behavior. So if you are a person that is 50 pounds overweight, 100 pounds overweight, I've been there, so don't, I'm not judging. But if, if you are in that situation, your current world is trying to keep you in that position. 
your family, your friends, your work, your car, your couch, your lifestyle, everything about your life is going to try to keep you at that weight. No one is going to want to change with you. So when you start to change, I want you to be ready for this, but you are going to ruffle some feathers. And it's very likely some people will be really nice, you know, they'll be very supportive sometimes, but maybe not others. And that's pretty normal. So I want you to be prepared for that fact that your children, your spouse, your coworkers, your family, some of them might push back on you. And I call this whole mentality the bucket of crabs. Okay, and that's why I have a bucket. <laughs> and it's in chapter seven of Dirty Lazy Keto Get Started. I talk about techniques on how to deal with this. I just want you to be prepared that it's pretty likely that it will happen. And a lot of people panic at that moment and they're like, <gasps> oh my gosh, I can't believe it. My best friend is turning on me. My mom is saying critical things. Oh my gosh. And then they panic and collapse. But what happens is these people, they start to look in the mirror up oh, and they see you making changes and they're up, oh, up. Oh, and they're, it's like they're looking at themselves in the mirror and it makes them face the fact that they're eating cake after church or they're ordering, you know, three beers at happy hour and nachos. And it makes them feel uncomfortable. So, you know, the bottom line is these people will panic because it makes them look at themselves. It's not you. You know the old adage like, it's you, it's not me, it's me, it's not you. Well, in this case, it's really true. So keep that in your heart because as you're reprogramming your thoughts and your actions start to change, some people are not going to be your friend along the way. It's a fickle process and it's very strange. <laughs> so that's number two. Doing good? Thumbs upping? Are we thumbs upping? Are we sharing? Share an experience. Has that happened to you? Have you had a friend, a, a spouse, a child, coworker, where you thought they were your friend, and then next thing you know, they're shoving food at you? I think you should share that in the comments because it's very common. And I'm curious, your experience. Please tell me. Maybe you have a perfect life. I'd like to hear that too. <laughs> but number three, this one's kind of also like, rah, 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 Stephanie's Debbie Downer. But number three, you know, sometimes painful, 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 painful change, painful moments, it can be expected, okay? Now, I don't want to make you all sad because weight loss can be a wonderful thing for your health, for your spirits, you know, for just a thousand different ways, the way you can move and sleep and your digestion and your sleep and your energy level, all these wonderful things. But the painful part can also be part of the process. And what I mean by painful, not like physical pain, but I want to give you an analogy, like lifting weights, for example. You know, if you've ever lifted weights or just done a lot of yard work or something with a lot of physical activity, you know, it's positive and fun while you're doing it. You're like, oh yeah, this is great. Everything's great. But then after you exercise that muscle and you keep going and you keep doing it and maybe keep going, keep going, keep going, all of a sudden there's some discomfort maybe the next day, right? That's because that muscle is repairing itself. So it's a positive thing, right? You're exercising, you're out in the yard, you're working out, um, you know, you're hiking, whatever it is you're doing. But then that soreness that comes with it when your body is rebuilding and getting stronger, that is a little bit of discomfort, right? So I want you to think of changing your life and changing your attitude might kind of be the same way. I want you to be ready for a little bit of danger. And I want to prepare you for this, okay? Now, it can be pretty normal during your process of changing your attitude and your belief system to maybe even backslide because of all these dangers, because it's uncomfortable, because of a million different things. Food just tastes yummy, right? Am I lying? But there's going to be moments where you maybe potentially, not saying, but there might be a second in your life where things go wrong, eat the wrong things, you feel all sad and depressed, does that mean all is not lost or all is lost? No. The trick of it all is, really, I'm going to take off this goofy sash, but the trick of it is when these painful moments happen or that discomfort from change or you backslide, I want you to have a plan. I want you to plan for that disaster. And I think that's okay. People pretend like, oh, uh, you know, it's going to be great. It's all my fault if it doesn't work. No, no. It is not your fault if things don't go, go well, but it is your fault if you don't have a backup plan, like an emergency plan. It's super important to expect problems and challenges and then create a emergency plan for you. That I will hold you accountable for. 
because that is one of the, that's the third secret to all of this, to overcoming that negativity and to making yourself into a new person is to have a backup plan. It's normal to have problems, but it is not normal to not have a plan. You feel me? It's like a fire alarm. Imagine a fire alarm going off in your house and your whole family, and the house is on fire, and your whole family is looking at each other, and you're like, yeah, I smell smoke. Yep, there's flames. Huh, what should we do? <laughs> do you see how ridiculous that sounds? It's the same thing with weight loss. During your journey, you have a problem, you have a challenge, something goes wrong, you have to have a plan, and then jump on the plan and do it. That is going to make you be successful. That is going to help you along your journey. Now, what I do during this secret plan of emergency situations is I like to come up with routines. This is what, for me, holds it all together. Routines are like a giant, giant clip. It just holds my whole life. My life might be falling apart. I might have bad things happening, sickness, you know, bad things in a relationship or family, horrible things might happen at work. But I have my routines that are holding my whole life together. My weight loss routines, my healthy eating keto routines. This is what I focus on. I don't even have to think. I just go back to those easy weight loss routines that I do every day. Don't think about it. And I just go to that, go to that part of my life. Go on autopilot. I don't have to think about it. There's no heat of the moment. There's no emotional craziness. I just go back to those routines. Now, I have a whole video on just routines. I know you're like, oh, what, what are they? Well, I can link that up after because I've already done a whole video on that. So I'll link that up for you next if you'd like to see what routines I'm talking about. Um, but realize it works. You'll come up with your own routines. And really, that's the secret to, to number three. I know. Isn't this fun? Are you having fun? Make sure you're doing the thumbs up. Um, so tell me a weight loss routine that you do. Tell me in the comments. You got to have one. What do you do? Like, do you grocery shop at once a week? Do you cut vegetables once a week? Do you, you know, work out at the same time every day? Tell me in the comments what you do. I bet you have one, and we can all kind of share and learn from one another. So that's one, two, three. Number four, this is how you overcome that whole, like, oh, it's so hard for me. This is how you're going to fake it till you make it. Number four is I want you to realize how much power is in your belief system. Like, your belief system. You know, what? Okay, she's getting all metaphysical and crazy. <laughs> no, I'm not. I swear to you. Think about this simple question. You've been asked this before. What do you do? Right, you've heard this before. What am I going to say? <laughs> what do you do when life hands you lemons? What do you do? Come on. Come on. <laughs> you know this one. What do you do when life hands you lemons? Do you just accept it? Do you go, oh, this tastes terrible. It's sour and gross and disgusting. And I'm angry. I've got lemons. Lemon for a car, lemon for a spouse, lemon for friends, lemon for a job, lemon for health. Do you just sit there and suffer and complain? Or do you quote unquote make lemonade, right? So that is a belief system. If life hands you lemons, you make lemonade. It's the power of beliefs. If you believe no matter what lemons come your way, you can still turn it into something positive. That is an example of how to turn your frown upside down and how to create a reality based on your belief system. Now, I know that was kind of a simplistic example, but to put it more in terms of weight loss, whether you think losing weight is hard or whether you think losing weight is easy and doable, you are both right. Does that make sense? If you really believe weight loss is hard or you really believe losing weight is easy, both of those people are 100% right. And that's because they've convinced themselves those are their beliefs, and therefore all of their actions, all of the energy they put out into the world, they're going to attract that kind of response. Now, you're probably still like, oh gosh, I don't know about that one. She's getting all crazy. Okay, let me give you another way of putting it. Like, think about Santa Claus, okay? We tell kids, believe in Santa Claus, kids, right? A lot of people believe and celebrate uh, Christmas, and you tell the children, if you're really good, and you're good all year, you're good little boys and girls, Santa will bring you lots of toys. And the kids believe it, right? When they're little, they totally buy it. And they're like, oh, am I good? Am I good? Right? You can make them do anything. I used to like tell my kids this when they were being naughty. And I'd be like, I'm texting Santa. I'm going to call him. And we would, I'd call my husband in the other room. 
and he he would pretend to be Santa. I would even change his name on the, uh, um, you know, on the call list so the kids thought it was him, or he'd call me. Kids bought it. I could have them do anything. They're like cleaning their rooms, being nice to each other because I, they believed in Santa. They believed in the concept. They believed um, good behavior was going to be rewarded. It's the same thing with weight loss. If you really believe the magic, the the reality, the the belief system, the rules, the low carb, if you believe it all works, it will work. It's part of uh, the human experience. Some of you are like, I don't think I like that one. <laughs> That's okay. Maybe number five is better for you. It's a little bit less woo-woo, but come on. You got to believe. I like the Santa one. I love Christmas. So number five is all about reprogramming your thoughts. Now, this might be slightly woo-woo. I'm going to push some stuff out the way. Slightly woo-woo, woo-woo. But I really do think that all of us have like a tape that plays inside of our head. Now, some of this might be, what, what I mean by a tape in your head is like, it's that little voice that tells you things like your conscience or, um, you know, things that have been told to you throughout your life. We all hear those things. Like you look in the mirror and you might hear that little weird voice. And I really, I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. But you know what I'm talking about, right? You know, some of these voices, some of these messages are like from our childhood. They're from um, maybe you were a chubby kid, because I was. And I always had people, adults, telling me, you know, you need to, you shouldn't eat that. Why are you eating dessert? You shouldn't have ice cream. You're chubby. You know, if only you'd lose weight, you'd be so cute. If only you stopped eating so much, you'd be so pretty. Look at your pretty face. Oh, you have such a pretty face. If only you lost weight. Like those are the hundreds of messages from my childhood. Do you have things like that? That, you know, kind of haunt me. And I have to reprogram that. Now, some of you might have these kind of messages like from your spouse. You might have a spouse who's said horrible things to you over the years. Oh, you know, when I married you, you were X size and you were, you looked this way and now look at you and you shouldn't eat that and you're going to sabotage your diet. I mean, spouses can be horrible or they can be saying stuff like, which is very confusing. You look just fine, honey. You don't need to lose weight. Have ice cream with me. Let's go out and get popcorn at the movies and candy like we always do. Right? So a spouse can be tricky by saying positive or negative things. So are you struggling with some of this? That's what I mean by that tape. Because we really have to, in my opinion, reprogram our tape that plays inside of our brain. We have to get rid of all those messages like from our childhood, from um, spouses or parents. And we have to plug in some positive things to our brain. So I want you to listen. I'm putting on some headphones. These are noise canceling, so maybe I shouldn't do that. But well, maybe I should. <laughs> but you really want to like, Fill your head with positive, positive encouragement, right? And if the words can't be your own, if it's still a struggle, you know, and you might be having depressive thoughts or negative thoughts, then fill your head with other people's words. I personally listen to a lot of podcasts. I do a lot of exercise in the morning. And, you know, I have it all on my iPhone, on my Apple Watch, on my little earbuds. And I listen to other people's positive, enthusiastic words about life. And I fill my brain with that kind of positivity. Do you get where I'm going with this? I'm so excited. I hope so. And tell me if you listen to a podcast that's helpful. You know, besides Dirty Lazy Keto Podcast by Stephanie Laska. <laughs> tell me a podcast that you like. Share that in the comments. One that I like to listen to that's very positive is um, Super Soul Sunday with Oprah. Love Oprah. If you're listening, feel free to call in. <laughs> Um, I also like the value of support groups, online digital support groups like uh, Dirty Lazy Keto on Facebook. I also have the premium support group. If you are a little shy and you pref right, you'd prefer to have that like smaller, intimate um, group, right? That's how I am. I get nervous amongst like 10 million people. So there's support groups for you. There's reading. I love, love, love to read a lot of positive books that can change my life, can fill my brain with positive thoughts, like you can overcome anything. Um, one, here's a few I've read recently. I love this book by Robin Roberts from Good Morning America. She says, everybody's got something. And it's very inspirational how she overcame different um, sicknesses and ailments and how her positivity and her attitude reprogrammed any kind of negative thoughts about her not surviving. I loved it. Um, here's another one that's more direct. It's a shorter book but it's called Make Your Bed, and it's by Admiral William H. 
Mc, McRaven. He's a U.S. Navy retired. Um, oh my gosh, he was a Navy SEAL. And it's short, it's sweet, punchy, but it's so meaningful. I could read it like a thousand times. He talks about his experience as a Navy SEAL and the advice that he learned how to just be tough and get going and defeat the odds. And he, he as well overcame a lot in his life. Um, sicknesses, injuries, it's so inspirational. For me, these fill my brain with thoughts like, I can do this too. You know, one of my all-time favorite books is called Educated by Tara Westover. Oh my gosh, this girl's childhood is so almost unbelievable. The, the difficulties she came from in her background with a family that was just, you know, completely off the grid and non unconventional. And she learned to read on her own, didn't go to conventional school. But then she ends up getting like PhDs and going to like Cambridge. And she wrote the most inspirational book. So if you have a book that you'd like to recommend that's inspirational or a podcast, please do it in the comments because I think we can all, you know, be inspired by that. It doesn't have to be about food. And I think that's surprising to people. You know, I like to read Brene Brown, Sean um, Acor, Michael Singer, Glennon Doyle. These people aren't necessarily talking about their struggles with weight loss, but it fills my brain with positivity and the fact that I can do it. Like I can overcome things. I can face issues and transform my life. So if you have an author, a book, a podcast, something positive to recommend to our group, share it below. Because remember, oh, remember that? I'm going to be picking somebody for um, the Get Started book from the comments. And the very last point, so that was number six. You're doing good? We're doing good? We're doing good? <laughs> you, I didn't lose you yet? You're still here? So number six, thumbs up if you're still here. Tell me in the comments. But number six from all of this, to transform your attitude, to change your life, to, to get rid of that little voice in your head that says, I can't do this, keto's so hard. We got to squash that. The number six tip is, my son will love this one, to just keep swimming, just keep swimming. Kind of like Dory. Remember Dory? What was that name of that movie? Tell me. Uh, Dory said this, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. You know, once you've got these strategies in place, you know, the, the positive thoughts in your head, the tape that you're replaying, the celebration of small victories, you know, overcoming resistance and getting support, um, creating those weight loss routines. Once you get all these things in place, you just keep swimming. You just keep, keep, keep doing them again and again, again, swimming, swimming, again and again, just keep spinning, 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 spinning over and over again. Just keep doing it. And that's how you overcome. That's how you create a new mask. That is how you fake it till you make it. And, you know, before you know it, you're walking around the grocery store, pushing your shopping cart, and you look down, and it's full of fruits and vegetables. And you're like, who is this person? And then you look down, and you got, like, gym shoes on, and your hair's in a bun. You just came from a workout. And you're like, who is this person? Sometimes I laugh at myself. I'm like, huh, because I faked it till I baked it. I'm not always in that same mindset, but darn it, I'm going to just keep plugging on and keep plugging on. And eventually it becomes you. It works. It's just as simple as that. Um, I do believe Dirty Lazy Keto is a lifestyle that's doable for everyone. No matter where you're at, no matter how old you are, no matter where you're starting or how much you have to lose, I feel like you can do this just like I did. I have plenty of resources to help you. Like I mentioned, I'm going to link up um, the video next about seven easy weight loss routines that'll be able to play next after this. So you can binge watch and fill your brain with positivity. And I just want to remind you that this lifestyle works because it's flexible. It's easy to do. It's affordable. And the food is great, right? And I'm here to support you 24 seven, turn on the video, turn on social. I'm always here. And I just want to cheer you on. I'm here to help you. Clap, 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 right? Transformation is possible. So let's clap for yourselves. Clapping.